Well, we've been telling you that Dr. Tim Clinton would join us here on NBL, and he's with us now to talk about a brand new book just released called Focus on the Future. And many of you know the name uh, Tim Clinton because he's uh, an associate of Dr. James Dobson and heard on a regular basis on Family Talk weekday afternoons, 1 p.m. here on WDCX. Uh, but with the release of the new book, so let's try to do what we can to get him on the air. We're going to do it right now. And uh, Dr. Clinton, Tim, good to have you with us. How are you? Hey, Neil. Thank you for having me. Delight to be with you. Yeah, so um, I think people obviously are familiar with some of the books you've written, but also being a part of Family Talk. And while we're going to focus on the book here in just a second, let me ask you about Family Talk because obviously – you're on there quite a bit, and I wonder if you ever planned <laughs> when you got into counseling um, that you would be hosting or and co-hosting a radio show. You know what, Neil? Um, it's a joy. Let me say that. Dr. Dobson, he's got more vinegar and fire in him than I've seen in a long <laughs> time. He's, he, he, every time we're together, he's just going 100 miles an hour. You know, he, he has such a love. Uh, for the family, obviously, but marriage, family, righteousness, and culture. And uh, he, he, he just, you know, he's burdened deeply about where we're at. And it's been a joy for me just to rub shoulders with him. I uh, started learning from him when I was a kid coming through on my undergraduate studies at Liberty. Mm-hmm. And uh, man, oh man, it's just been a really good ride. I love the power of God in and through his heart. You know, we were, we were together recently, and uh, um, I, I saw him stop a meeting. We had invited a bunch of family policy leaders in. He stopped the meeting, and he said, we got to stop right now and pray. Mm. You know, and he said, I'm telling you what. He said, I'm so burdened about the task before us and what's happening in culture. And uh, as we kn- knelt to pray, I heard him say these words, Neil. He said, you know, uh, God, this is dark, mm. evil in a lot of ways. He said, it seems so ominous. And, but he said this, except that you are with us. And I thought, you know what? That's a man who understands the tenor of the times and the sure. power of God for such a time as this. You know that? Amen. Amen. And uh, your book you obviously is about America and our future. It's called Focus on the Future, subtitled Your Family, Your Faith, and your voice matter now more than ever. Uh, we're going to talk about that in great detail. Now, you mentioned uh, that he used the word dark, and a lot of folks these days are describing what's happening in our world as dark, particularly here in America. Um, Jesus said, yeah. you are the light of the world, which gives me the idea that maybe he thought with his light emanating from our lives, maybe we could do something about that darkness. Comment on that, if you don't mind, in light of your book. You know, Larry Crabb, a good friend of mine, psychologist, Larry's gone now, but Larry told me about an experience he had at, uh, I think it's Cape Town, southernmost part of South Africa, Mm -hmm. looking at the oceans coming together. He was with a theologian buddy of his, and he said, Tim, I was pontificating a little bit, and I said to him, aren't you just overwhelmed by the darkness? He said, I'm just really burdened by the darkness, and his theologian buddy looked at him and said, Larry, no, I'm not. He said, I'm overwhelmed by the light. And you're right. As long as God's in the equation, um, we got a lot of hope. And I'll tell you what, with the beatdown we've been through the last 20 months or so, I, I just wrote down my notes real quick. That COVID with the lockdowns, loss, loneliness, listen to this, mm-hmm. the racial tension, the trauma that we went through, the rioting, the election mess, the impeachment trials, the administration transition, the rush for a vaccine, the rollout of it, coming into summer thinking we're going to break free. Next thing you know, we get a Delta variant, Afghanistan, <laughs> censorship, uh, suppression. I mean, I get tense just bringing that stuff up. You know what? Uh, there was a, there's a guy named Barry McGuire, McGuire Carwax. Barry walked up to a microphone recently in a meeting I was in, Neil, and he said, you know what? He said, um, statistically, it looks like about 75% of Christians mm-hmm. are filled with fear. They're afraid. And I'm telling you, that's what I see. People are afraid. I mean, it's been rough. And it's only intuitive that we'd have a mental uptick in mental health issues. I mean, when you look at the fear factor, you know, anxiety is off the charts. They're, we're writing more scripts right now for anxiety medication than ever before. Depression, suicidality. Here's the tragedy. Even among our kids, kids and suicide, that doesn't go together. That's just a reflection of where things are. My daughter Megan was talking to me, Neil. Um, 
And she said, Dad, I'm thinking about Olivia. That's our little granddaughter. Mm -hmm. uh, she's two and a half years old. I call her Papa Girl. She said, Dad, I keep thinking about her in the middle of the night, thinking, what's it going to be like for Olivia when she grows up? Dad, is she going to enjoy uh, being a kid like we did and enjoy the freedoms that we have and so much more? That, that Neil, is the heart of why I wrote Focus on the Future. And you're right. It's not a book about darkness. It's about light. It's about hope. It's about what we can do, one family, one individual at a time, mm -hmm. to turn this thing. And it's about getting our mental health right. It's about stabilizing our own personal families. There's a lot coming against that, you know, like screen time, porn, and all that stuff right. we need to talk openly about. And practical strategies about bringing the church to a place where the church awakens and takes her rightful place. I don't know about you, but I'm tired of the silencing. I'm tired of the shaming. I'm tired of the stigmatizing. I'm tired of people telling me what to do. No, no, no. Let's, let's get this thing figured out. And God, give us strength mm -hmm. and wisdom on this journey. The irony of what you're describing is profound because I'm, I'm sitting in the studio here looking out through the glass into the main lobby where my son and daughter-in-law are. Uh, with two of my four grandkids, including Blythe, who was just born two two months ago. Blythe Elise, she's a sweet little pumpkin. And I'm looking at her as you're talking about <laughs> about that story. And, you know, but I felt the same thing. And I believe that a lot of parents in America are feeling the same thing or grandparents. Like this is not the world that we grew up in. Something has very much changed. And, you know, with the list that you read and boy, I was resonating with every one of them. We talked about all those things on this program over the last year or two. And um, there's a, there is a sense of fear and hopelessness. And I wonder, you know, in the book, what, what approach do you take about where you even begin? The list itself is overwhelming. Where do you begin to make a difference? You know, it starts, um, yeah, in, in the years of teaching counselors, I um, heard a statement from a trauma psychologist, Diane Langberg, and she wrote these words, in our lives first. And I thought, what? In our lives first. Mm -hmm. You can't give what you don't have. Right. And I think what we've got to do is step back and say, God, I need a fresh perspective on you. I need a fresh perspective on your grace and your love, what it means that you're holy and just, and God, what you've called us to do and be. And we're called to love God first and then love others, not in the other, <laughs> the other way around. And I think when you, when, you, when you hear that for a moment, you stop and take a deep breath, and you say, you know what? If I'm overwhelmed with fear and anxiety, i got to press in. It's like Philippians 4, 4 through 9. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say re rejoice. Let your moderation or your confidence be known to everyone. Here it is. Before it says pray and all that kind of stuff, it says the Lord is at hand. Mm. Paul knew that God was in the midst of all of it and that he was the God of Psalm 46. It says this, Elohim God is our refuge and our strength. He's a present help during times of trouble. We press in closer to him. We stabilize our own perspective. And then, by the way, through the process of osmosis, like in our families, we give that to our children and our children's children. So we, we're calling people up to press into God like they never have before. And the truth is God loves to use brokenness to send us fleeing back to him. You know mm -hmm. that? Sure. I've seen that so many times over. God never wastes wounds if we'll just press into them. So, Neil, I think it starts there. I try to just have fresh perspectives on the significance of relationships, talk about the new neuroscience that's out there and the power of uh, getting your head straight, thinking clearly, and embracing that. And then and the second thing is stabilizing our families. I mean, it's, and when you fail to see where you're at and what you're going through, you know that? When you don't take account on where we are and, you're, and be honest with yourself, you aren't going to make the adjustments. It's like in sports. Mm -hmm. great, great athletes don't make excuses. They don't turn a blind eye. They make adjustments. We've got to make adjustments. Take a look at our families just for a second, if I can jump there. Uh, it's like little things like the importance of dinner together. Look at the screen and what it's doing to us. Mm -hmm. Take a look at families sitting down at, in a restaurant. Everybody's on their phone. Right. Let's get control of this stuff. Here's some interesting research. Put this in the book and just talk about practical things we can do in our families. Did you know that eating dinner together is, a, is an indicator of whether or not kids are healthy? 
And I'm not talking about food. Of course, kids who, by the way, eat dinner together as a family tend to eat more healthy. Mm -hmm. But it's not (laughs) about the food. Neil, there's something beautiful that begins to take place around the dinner table, for example. And and my thought I had was, well, is it one or two times a week that matters? No. You know what the research is showing? There's no drop-off. The more you eat dinner together, the more healthy your kids are. No and by the way, it shows it even with, even with teens. Um, special time. We're learning and, and dealing with defiance with kids or ADHD, that one of the most important components to overcoming that in kids is spending about 20 minutes a day of command-free special time with your kids. In other words, getting on the floor with them, crawling into their world, not telling them, hey, hey Zach, let's go out and play a game of catch. No, no, no. That was an indirect command. No, you step into their world. And what starts taking place in that dynamic becomes revolutionary. We've learned things like this. The quality of your relationship with your kids determines the effectiveness even of your discipline strategies. That's powerful stuff, Neil. That's the kind of stuff we're trying to say, hey, listen, let's embrace this. And then ultimately, God, what are you calling us to do as a church? What do you want us to do and be right now? You know, I'm couple of thoughts come to mind. We'll take a break here in a minute, but just I want to react to some of what you're saying because um, I had a thought the other day that, you know, even if, if they pass laws that make worship illegal and owning a Bible illegal and everything else, they, they still can't stop us from loving God or, obe- or obeying God, right? There's, so, so there's that. And, and I'm thinking of uh, Daniel in the lion's den and not failing to bow to Nebuchadnezzar and the whole thing. And, and the idea that w- we have a choice in this and, and the stuff you're talking about, just having dinner with your kids. Uh, getting down on the floor, looking them in the eye, and choosing to play with them, those are all things that um, that that we have control over. And, and the, the, the bad outcomes or the problems associated with not doing those things, in other words, are preventable. Like, like we've got power in this. This has nothing to do with what people believe on Capitol Hill. This is what we believe in our own home, and it's so encouraging to hear you highlight that. I love sports, Neil. Um, <laughs> I, I know you're up in that Buffalo, Rochester, uh, you know, Toronto area up there. I love the Steelers, but uh, hey, at the heart of all this, it's like not in my house. You're not going to come into our place and mm-hmm. do this. Uh-uh. <laughs> not in our place. That's exactly the mentality we need as we look at our own homes. Yeah. God has given us a Judea, and then it's Samaria, and then it's the uttermost parts of the world. Being faithful over those little things, Mm -hmm. yeah, it's interesting. You you learn when you get older, it's the little things that really mattered the most. And simple things like, hey, you're right. Let's figure this dinner thing out. Let's figure out some floor time. What does it mean to love and be loved well? What does it mean to put Christ first in our home and so much more? Ah, We just get, uh, it's like going back to sports. When you're in trouble, when your shot's off, you get back to the foul line. Right. You get back in. When you're playing baseball, you get back to the fundamentals. Practice those things. That's the dynamic that really separates everybody and everything. And then in the midst of this, and we can't turn a blind eye to this, we're in a fight. We're in a battle. And sometimes you've got to mix it up. You know, Dr. Dobson, um, I heard him uh, address a group of um, – leaders, a lot of leaders in the room, Mm -hmm. faith leaders, and not even sure why I was in there. Uh, It was back early on, and I I just saw him, tears in his eyes, and he just stopped the room, and he said, we need to pray. We need to stop and pray right now. We need to pray. Here's what he said, that the church would awaken and take her rightful place. Until then, parachurch organizations and others have to step kind of stand in the gap, but right. he said, the real power is in the church. And, and when you see this battle and this war going on uh, around religious liberty, you begin to realize they, everybody understands the power of the church. Yep. God alive in his people. And when, and when the people begin moving, it's like, <laughs> I always say this, Julie, my wife, runs a women's ministry. When the women get to praying, where I grew up, they would say this, it puts the dogs up under the bed. <laughs> Neil, you, you get what I'm saying? Uh-huh. <laughs> Things start happening. Mm-hmm. And when we start pressing in and saying, hey, wait a second, yep. God, what do you want us to do and be? That's where the fire and that's where the power comes from. Got to take a quick break. How do we get this book? 
Uh, listen, right now we're doing a special um, thing through um, Family Talk, the James Dobson Family Institute. Neil, if you go up on drjamesdobson.org, uh, if you give a donation of any amount to the ministry, uh, we're going to send you a copy of Focus on the Future, Your Family, Faith, and Voice Matter More Now Than Ever as a, as a gift uh, back to you. Uh, we'd love to put it in the hands of people. Again, it's just go up on drjamesdobson.org, and it's a way to, you know, hey, to, to, to continue and further the ministry of what Doc's been committed to, that marriage and family and righteousness and culture piece. And, um, of course, you can find it wherever else you want, up on, you know, Amazon or what have you. But right. that's a special thing we're doing right now. All right, we'll get there, drjamesdobson.org. And uh, we'll be back in just a moment with Dr. Tim Clinton. He's president of the American Association of Christian Counselors. His name is one you probably heard in association with Dr. James Dobson because he's pretty much become a regular on Family Talk, which airs at 1 p.m. weekday afternoons here on WDCX. We'll be back with more right after this. Don't go away. Thanks for joining us on this edition of NBL. Dr. Tim Clinton is our guest. He is a certified Christian counselor and has been for years. He's an author. He's co-host of Family Talk uh, with Dr. James Dobson that airs here on WDCX. And um, he's got a voice that he's using to speak truth to Americans, to believers, and to the world, I believe, ultimately, because these things affect not just people here in America, but there's a ripple effect around the world. Um, we don't have time to go into all the things that you listed earlier, but there's an awful lot of things that are pressing right now. Racial issues, obviously, have been an issue uh, for a while. Uh, the critical race theory in the schools, I believe— parents in the state of Virginia had something to say about what their students are being exposed to with regard to pornographic literature and other things. Uh, COVID has been a major issue, and now the, with the possibility of uh, mandatory vaccines for kids, um, there's a lot of people stressing out, and I know uh, that anxiety and depression and suicide are on the rise. We hear that everywhere. So I wanted to give you a moment to just talk about those things, and, and maybe uh, if you've had any direct involvement with any of those particular issues with regard to clients or conversations you've had, because these are troubling issues in our day. You know, Neil, um, you, you are right. I mean, there's huh, lines are being drawn everywhere, and people um, um, are, are getting increasingly tense and, uh, uh, as I said earlier, afraid. Um, let me say this. Um, I, I was interviewing Ralph Reed um, not long ago. You know Ralph. Yeah. And, Ralph and I were talking back and forth, and he just said, Tim, what do you think of the future of uh, America and all that kind of stuff? And he came back and he said, I like to quote Warren Buffett, never bet against America. Mm. He said, never bet against America. Tim, I'm seeing a stirring going on. I was interviewing Neil, a lady, a trauma psychologist, and um, we had her up on uh, Family Talk recently, mm -hmm. Shawnee Anderson. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about this very issue, and she said, Tim, I'm going to tell you what I see. People are so done with everything. They've been so beat up. He, she said, it reminds me of a lot of work I do with um, women who are victims of domestic violence, interpersonal uh, violence. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, what do you mean? She said, there comes a time when it's done. She's tolerated it, and uh-uh, this ain't happening anymore. And she's ready to fight back. And she has been silenced, she's been shamed, she's been controlled, uh -uh, and not ever doing this again. She said, that's where I see the, the American people right now. now. There's such a stirring going on, and they want to get their voice back. Mm -hmm. I, I'd encourage this. And I, and I say, you know, we, we have to be measured in how we go about things, and we need to discuss and, and push back. Uh, but do it in a way that we speak truth in love. But listen, sometimes, sometimes, and I think this is where we're at, we got to stand up and say no more. Uh, we got we got to stand for biblical truth. I'd encourage people, listen, get wisdom, but press into the Word of God and stand strong on the statutes of God. That's where we are, and that's where we need to be for such a time as this. And may God lead us and God protect us uh, in the midst of all this. I mean, I, I don't think I've ever seen a stirring like I'm seeing right now. And people are saying, okay, 
It's time. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we just got to pray that God gives us wisdom. And I, I pray earnestly this. I pray that the pulpits of America will, will, will find the backbone they need uh, to stand bold and not, and not be soft. This isn't a time for that. Not at all. You mentioned Dr. Diane Langberg earlier, and I know we've only got about two minutes left with you here. But, um, you know, the, the comment that she made about essentially it begins with us. We've got to take care of us first. Toby Mac has a song called Starts With, with Me. And um, that's the bottom line, ultimately, because the things you're talking about obviously have political implications. There's cultural implications. But we're believers first. Yeah. We're followers of Jesus Christ. And it it has to begin with us. It was Something really powerful you said earlier, it's one of the reasons why I want to encourage you to get a copy of the book, because it focuses on that reality. And, Tim, if you want to offer any final word of encouragement, because we have some say in that. We have some say in what we allow the Lord to do in our own lives first. You know, I think it was a C.S. Lewis piece. I think I put it in the final chapter. Just talked about our churches, and that's the real strength and hope. Really, it's about us. We're the people of God. We're the church. Big C. Uh, C.S. Lewis, oh, here it is. He once wrote, the perfect church service would be one where we were almost aware, unaware of, and our attention would have been on God. Mm. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> what it means Love is it. That, 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 that you bet. We're so saturated in who he is on being in the way, if you will, being in his way, so that people, when they see us, all they do is see him. And by the way... Um, you know, with even Jesus, he was a rock of offense to those who didn't believe. That's right. There's going to be a battle. You know that. And there were times when Jesus said, hey, no more. He flipped the tables over uh, on the money changers and drove them out of the temple. It's time. Neil, it's time for us to really press into the heart of God and ask him what he wants us to do. But let me say this. It starts in our lives first, and it's our, it's our families. And so goes what? what? What did Pope John Paul II say? As goes the family, so goes the nation, and so goes the whole world. God help us for such a time as this. All right, 30 seconds left. DrJamesDobson.org and Dr. Tim Clinton, tell us again what happens if you make a donation at that site? Any donation. Any donation to uh, drjamesdobson.org, the James Dobson Family Institute. We're going to rush you out a free copy of this book, Focus on the Future. Uh, it's a, just a, a kind way of saying thank you for being a part of and supporting the ministry of Dr. James Dobson. Uh, you guys, I tell you what, it, it's just like I said earlier, God's got a fire burning still inside of him, and it's just so much joy. We've got to pray that God extends his life like Hezekiah prayed. You know that? And let's stand bold together Amen. for marriage, for family, for righteousness and culture. God bless you. Dr. Tim Clinton, focus on the future. Get a copy. Go to drjamesdobson.org. Give a donation of any size. And, hey, come back and join us again sometime. We'd love to have you. Thank you, Neil, so much.